So just, I mean, just it's sort of how we're normally doing things, one topic a day, if we can manage it. And the topic for today is the average rate of change. So we've seen linear functions, and linear functions have this always have the same rate of change. That's f of x equals mx plus b. This m is our rate of change. Other functions do not have constant rates of change. I mean, f of x equals 10 minus 4.9 x squared. This function could represent the height of the fall of a falling object. You can take a physics course to see why. And the rate that the height is changing at is the object's velocity. Well, we know that the velocity of a falling object isn't constant because falling objects accelerate. So this function does not have an average rate of, it does not have a constant rate of change. Try that sentence again. But we still might want to know sort of, well, on average, how quickly was an object falling before it hit the ground? And that kind of summary statement is, well, the average rate of change. Average rates of change of functions are found on intervals. It doesn't make sense to ask what's the average rate of change of x squared. You have to ask what's the average rate of x squared on some interval. And the formula for the average rate of change might to look awfully familiar. F of B minus F of A over B minus A. If it doesn't look familiar, we can make it look familiar. We can label this point A comma F of A, and we can label this point B comma F of B. And then we'll realize that the average rate of change is the slope of the line going through both of these points. And there's the average rate of change formula. And now that we've introduced it, we should do a few examples. We'll start with a kind of unmotivated, just purely mathematical example. We'll give you a function. And 
and we'll give an interval one comma three. And let's find the average rate of change, excuse me, on this interval. This is a very bug and play type of form debug. We just evaluate the function at the endpoints, and then we stick those in in the right place. So, what are these quantities? Now, f of my handwriting is about to take a dive, but f of three equals two times three squared plus three minus three. So that's three squared is nine times two is 18 plus three and then minus three is still 18. And F of one is two times one squared plus one minus three. So two plus one is three minus three is zero. And then once you have those numbers, we just plug and play 18 <laughs> minus zero by this by um, three minus. <laughs> Sorry, that, that hand fighting. <laughs> 18 minus zero divided by three minus one. This is two, so 18 divided by two is nine. And there's our average rate of change. A lot of the time when you're asked about average rate of change, you're given data rather than a form of a. So as an illustration of that, I'm just going to do the first problem from the in-class work. where we look at marriage rates in America. So the number of people, I mean, the number of adult Americans who are getting married has been declining literally for decades. In 1960, 72% of adult Americans were married. By 2010, just a little over half of adult Americans were married. And we can ask on average, how have the marriage rates changed between 1960 and 2010. So we're asking here for an average 
rate of change, we're not given a formula to go with this. But we can just think this out. We're on the interval from 1960 to 2010. So here is our interval. And remember that this interval is telling you what X is going from, like here. X, we're on the interval from one to three. So X is going from one to three. So if we're on this interval, these years are the X's and these percentages are the F of X. Is, and the average rate of change we are looking for is F of 2020 minus F of 1960, all divided by 2020 minus 1960. Sorry, that's a little, uh, a little cramped. But I mean, you might sort of object well, we're not given a function. So how do we know F of 1960? And how do we know F of 2020? And it's true we're not given a formula. We're not given an equality with squares and multiplication and stuff but we are given data. We're told that in 2010, <coughs> the marriage rate was 51%. Um, 2010, sorry, I don't know how that changed, but let's fix every reference to 2020. We're told that in 2010, the marriage rate was 51%. And we're told that in 1960, it was 72%. And that's the only data we need to do this subtraction and then this division. Giving us a little room to work with. F of 2010 is 51. F of 1960 is 72 divided by. 2010 minus 1960. And this is, let's see, what the heck is this? TI something, TI smart view. Give our calculator a second to warm up. The screen sharing has stopped. As the shared window, I don't know what that's about, but go to our calculator. Mm -hmm. 
maximize it, the fraction or the division we were looking at was 51 minus 72 divided by 2010 minus 1960, and we get negative 0.42. This negative sign indicates that um, the percentage of Americans who are married is going down. So negative for a decreasing rate. So that's, uh, I mean, this is just a number as it's written in our calculator, negative 0.42. Negative 0.42 what? I mean, everything had a unit in this problem. It was a word problem. Presumably, our answer should also have units. And the answer to that is our units are going to be something per something. This is a rate of change. And all rates of change have units something per something. And we just look at the top 72%, 51%. Our units in the top are percent. 1960 is a year, 2010 is a year. The units in the bottom are year, so negative 0.42% per year. On average, the um, marriage rate has been going down. <clears throat> and that's average rate of change. Does anybody have any questions on this material? Yes. Do you always do the, how do you know which one to put left and right? Does it matter? Um, you put, see, you put the, um, the, I mean here, A and B are ordered. A is smaller and B, is larger. And traditionally, it's the larger one on the left minus the smaller one on the right. It shouldn't actually matter, though, because if you reverse this subtraction, you just make the top negative. And if you also reverse this subtraction, you make the bottom negative, and then your negative signs cancel out. But traditionally, it would be this B on the left, this A on the right. Then 